Alright, hot off the presses, man. We're gonna dedicate this show to kind of like uh responding to certain comments that are in the uh comment section. And uh, I found something interesting in our what is that shit uh Boyce Watkins Maria Lloyd anti Afro Svengali video. Let me see here. What was what was that? Yeah, reaction to anti Afro Swingali's Dr. Boyce Watkins video. That's what we're going to talk about today. We have an individual who seems to be, I don't know, smoking something. <laughs> I don't understand. It has to be. What their gripe is, man. A lot of these cats, like, like me and Tony always say, they just want to argue just to be arguing. You know what I mean? But uh, let me read this comment from an individual named M.I. Moore, or Me Moore. And it reads, I think this is Judge Mathis speaking. I guess that's supposed to be a crack on Tony's mm, vernacular. Yes. Okay, because I've heard that before. People say he sounds like Judge Mathis or well, from Keenan and Kel, one of them niggas. Yeah, Keenan. Yeah, Keenan. <laughs> niggas trying to roast you, Tony. They're trying to. Okay, uh, either way, when you log in the federal court site and go to a specific case, it tells you whether or not an attorney is on the case. She is using that site, which timelines out the proceedings and filings. Be fair and listen to the entire clip. And yes, she reaches quite a bit, in my opinion, but has merit. Would you like to respond to anything that I just read, Tony? Yes, I okay. would. And I wish I was, you know, I wish I were Judge Greg Mathis. I wouldn't be here responding to this ignorant-ass comment. Oh, oh. Um, there you go. Yes, the federal site does have a login and a password, but what that person left out while you call yourself trying to check my expertise is that you have to have a uh, passcode and a username to log in, and they give those to licensed attorneys. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So that information is public record if you have the case number. You can go to the court and ask for it by case number. They can pull up something called the Register of Actions. Mm -hmm. The Register of Actions is what you can, or the docket. In federal court, it's the docket. Register of Actions, same difference. You can go to the federal court in person and pull that up. Or you can get a online account, which they make you go through training so you can know how to operate the system. And so you have they give they assign you a password and a username and you can log in and see everything there. Mm -hmm. But that's again that's only for licensed attorneys or maybe for legal corporations, corporations that do legal research and so forth mm -hmm. and so on. But that's not information that would be accessible to someone that is on the web that is doing pre preliminary podcasts. Afro anti Afro Svengali or whatever her name is, she would have to you know. You got to have a license number. Every attorney has a license number. You have to submit that license number to the court, and then you have to pay a fee mm -hmm. for, to have access to that system. Then you can get on there and go through the docket, which I doubt she has. Maybe she has. I doubt it. But in any event, it's still public information. You right. can go to the court and request it. So I don't understand, you know, what she, what, what, what the purpose of that comment is. Again, niggas just, niggas just comment. They just dissent just to dissent. <laughs> just to have something to argue about. Uh, of course, that that's the case. You have to. You can get in there, but you got to be a licensed attorney to do so. Mm -hmm. If not, listen carefully, because it's apparent you didn't listen to the last fucking podcast. If you don't have that password and that username, you can walk your ass right to the federal court of the Northern District in Illinois and ask for that pleading, ask for the register of actions of that pleading by name and they'll give it to you. Mm -hmm. They may charge you a nickel or a dime per page if you want it in hard copy, but ain't nobody trying to do that. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's public information, but it's not necessarily uh, accessible by the public if you're not a licensed attorney, mm -hmm. uh, electronically speaking. Right. So uh, yes, but I, that, that I'm why would I not? Con that's federal, that's standard federal procedure. That's federal court mm -hmm. procedure. So I don't, I really don't know what the I guess this individual is trying to say that Svengali knows what she's talking about when she says that Boyce doesn't have a lawyer because she has access 
to this uh, federal website. Well, here's the problem. The, the litigation, here's the, here's the situation. Until the judgment has been issued, mm -hmm. that case isn't over. Right. Judges will uh, extend latitude or extend time for filing, extend time for obtaining counsel for a lot of different reasons. So, no, he may not have an attorney at present, but Af anti afro Spengali didn't present or didn't establish that she had even checked the register of action. Okay. That was my point. She never stated that she had even checked the register. She just came out there and said he didn't have one. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, well, he may not have had one as of that date you made it, or he may not have had one uh, when she first filed the lawsuit. He wouldn't have one because he doesn't even know he's been sued until he's been served. Right. So he would need the time to, okay, figure out what it is and then go get an attorney. But you notice he hasn't been defaulted. Right, exactly. You see what okay. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, At least as far as we know. Yeah, as yeah. far as we know, yeah. he hasn't been defaulted. So, mm -hmm. oh, Let me uh, go to this, right? This individual, me, Moore, M.I. Moore, says, be fair and listen to the entire clip. And uh, I respond, what entire clip? I'm trying to, like, well, what the hell are you talking about? Because I'm thinking to myself, is she speaking in reference to... Uh, when we were basically playing Svengali's video, and then we were interjecting, and then they respond, I believe it's a she. Um, she says, I wish y'all would let it play before interjecting. Oh. Uh, I've heard it prior, and chopping and screwing her video is leading to inaccuracies. She is a bit nuts, but Watkins is a hustler as well. First-hand knowledge here. Okay, so we're leading to inaccuracies of somebody that's a bit nuts nuts well that, that's not even the point the point is uh if we're going to basically have a critique of her video we should we listen can, to it well yeah we've already listened to it but if we're going to have, critique her video we can't just let the whole thing play <laughs> and then come back you know because it was like i don't know but 30 minutes of her ranting yeah you know what i mean we have to stop at the point where we want to contest or we want to interject something that we feel needs to be said. Right. You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, like I said, go 30 minutes and then be like, oh, and remember she said such <laughs> and such. They're like, no, you stop it right there when it's fresh in your mind so that you can speak on it. I'm like, these niggas kill me, man, trying to tell you how to run your shit. Be like, you chopping and screwing it is leading to inaccuracies? Yeah, if you're an idiot. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you're, I, I think it would lead more to inaccuracies if we let the whole thing play and then came back later mm -hmm. and then tried to add our own little so-called uh, spin or interjections on the shit. You know what I mean? Because it's not fresh in the minds of the individuals who, uh, you know, who's in our audience. You know what I mean? So I, I, I'm like, once again, it just seems like someone's just nitpicking just for the sake, sake of fucking nitpicking. You know what I mean? Right. I don't want, and they never really said what the inaccuracies were. Yeah, that's, that was my next question. Yeah. What, what, what was exactly inaccurate? I don't get that. Mm. Let me see here. Now, this is my favorite one. It's coming up. Hold on. Uh, yeah, they came out with guns blazing on this one. Uh, me more, am I more, says, I think, no, no, god damn it, son. Oh, fuck, here we go with this stupid shit. Now, comment don't want to show up, hold on. All right, well, let me read it from here. They basically state, he or she basically states, y'all have no fucking clue what you're talking about. Almost always defendants file a motion to dismiss before answering. Shake my head. It's hard to listen to the commentary. Bitch, did you hear what I said <laughs> in the podcast? <laughs> did you hear me say that he was taking it too easy on this bra? Didn't you hear me say that he that they usually have their complaints dismissed outright and then ask for sanctions? Didn't you hear that? No, they didn't. She didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? It's got to be a woman. It's got to be a woman. <laughs> it's got to be a woman, son. <laughs> Bitch, I said that. <laughs> 
This will be oppositional for the sake of being opposition. Just yeah, just for the sake of having something to say. That's what they normally do. I said if he wanted to go, as a matter of fact, that was a specific point in the podcast. Right. Well, where we mentioned, he said, "Well, you you think she's going? He's going to you know soft on her? Yes, mm -hmm. he is going too soft on her because he could have had her shit dismissed outright." And ask for sanctions. And I also said, I know what he's doing. He's trying to resolve the matter behind the scenes, which is also something that they do. The lawyers, uh, counsel, opposing counsel, they, they communicate, they talk to each other, they write letters, they email, they get together and they go to lunch off times to try to resolve the matter without going to court. As a matter of fact, the court encourages that they resolve it without entering it on the record. That's how you get a settlement. Mm -hmm. One attorney calls another one and says that my client will settle for X, Y, and Z. And the other client will say, the other opposing counsel will say that my client will settle for one, two, and three. Let's see if we can meet somewhere in the middle and resolve. Mm -hmm. That's settlement negotiations. Goes on behind litigation all the time. And that's what I said is happening in this case. That's, that is what I believe is happening in this case. But what you do is yes, you file a motion for summary and have that shit thrown out, out of court and you ask for sanctions. That was addressed in the video. That was addressed in the podcast. Motherfuckers do not listen at all, man. They just be in their feelings about whatever the fuck it I was. think what I it is know. is they're, they're supporters of these people. Right. And they feel that they just have to defend them and cape and flag wave for them. So they come to the forefront and come at anybody who they think is taking an adversarial stance against it. Well, let me make this clear. That bitch is nuts, just like you said. <laughs> That Afro, anti-Afro Svengali bitch is nuts. Hey, 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 man. I like Svengali, man. That that woman is a nutcase. <laughs> I think she off on this boy's walking shit, man. That woman is a nutcase. Okay? Okay. And she got a hard on for any nigga with any money, with any power or influence. And that attracts women. She got a hard on for any nigga that's powerful, that is a pussy man. Mm. So every nigga with any money that can attract any pussy is going to be an abuser to her. Mm. Mm. Okay? So, I, I, again, unless you just want to uh, argue for the case just for the sake of argument. You're just arguing just because. Just to have something to say. Tony, uh, it, it's clear right here because she said you have no fucking clue what you're talking about, man. That's what she said. Bitch, you, you just confirmed my point. <laughs> What you mean? You just confirmed what I already said. I stated that in the video. So if there's someone here that doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about, it's you. <laughs> That's crazy. They come on here to contest what you said. Yeah. But even though what you said confirms what they said. Their comment. Yeah. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> we got a problem. I think the videos are too long and they lack the discipline. You know what I mean? Or the wherewithal to actually stick with. And listen to it. To, to actually listen to it. Because we seem to be running into that problem, man. It's like no one seems to be able to just have, have that you know, that attention span that just actually listen to what the fuck is being said. You feel me? I mean, am I speaking English in this motherfucker or what? I'm not, man. I said that. I mm. said that specifically in that video. It should have been dismissed outright. And he should be asking for sanctions. Should be asking for her to pay the court, uh, pay court costs for frivolous for a frivolous lawsuit. Mm -hmm. That's what sanctions. That's what you do with sanctions. If a lawsuit is frivolous, you ask for it. So yeah, I mean, you are already corroborating what I said, bitch. She said, "Shake my head." Keep shaking your motherfucking head. It's hard head. to listen to the commentary. Well, it's hard for you to listen. It's, it's always hard for a stupid motherfucker to listen to commentary. It's always hard for a low IQ nigga to listen to anything and understand it, especially when it's outside of their wheelhouse. Well, I can't say that because it's obvious she had, whoever this is, uh -huh. they have some understanding of legal procedure. Right. They have some understanding. They just don't have any understanding apparently of simple English. <laughs> like what the bitch, what the hell are you talking about? Like you trying to contest something that we basically are in agreement on. It's yeah. like, I don't, what, like what? 
She, yeah. Shake my head. You have no clue what you're talking about. She just, what, what you are, you're <laughs> triggered because we went at your hero. We went mm. at Afro, uh, anti Afro Spengali. Again, that woman is nuts. <laughs> that woman is nuts. Okay? Oh, that woman yeah. is a fucking psycho. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I just found it just strange, man, that, you know, she would get on here and talk shit when. Everything that she's talking about. Uh, We've already agreed to. We've yeah, already said. We're in agreement. Like, bitch, what, you're actually co-signing with what the fuck we're talking about. But in her bizarro world, for some reason, she feels we're saying the opposite. That's because she thinks that we're that we a clown and anti-Afro Spengali. Mm. And to a certain extent, I am. Right. That's what the real opposition is about. The opposition ain't even about what you're saying. It's the fact of who you're saying it to. Mm. She's upset. That we're going at her hero. Her hero that she admits is fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah, she basically said, yeah, she reaches a little bit, you know, but there is some merit. And yeah. also, she basically states that she knows she has firsthand experience and knowledge that uh, Boyce Watkins is a, you know, a shyster or a scam artist, but they don't provide any Okay, well, proof. if you have that knowledge, then you need to be on the witness list. Right. If you have that knowledge, you need to go to court and you need to testify for Maria Lloyd. If yeah. you have that knowledge, have you, uh, have you submitted your name to be included on the witness list to be called for trial? Have you done that? If you have personal knowledge, have you come out and, and, and admitted that? I mean, excuse me, have you come out and... and uh, disclosed your name, address, and phone number to Miss Lloyd's counsel so that you can be called as a witness at the trial? Have you done that? Mm. Let me read once again what they say. Uh, I wish y'all would let it play before interjecting. I've heard it prior. And chopping and screwing her video is leading to inaccuracies. She didn't let, she points out no inaccuracies. And also she says she is a bit nuts. Okay, but Watkins is a hustler as well. First hand knowledge here. But of course, she does not point out inaccuracies and she does not point out uh, her first hand knowledge of him being a so called hustler. Yeah, yeah. Which is a vague term. You know what I mean? Doesn't necessarily uh, state any uh, impropriety or any sort of, uh, you know, what's what I'm looking for. Help me out, buckwheat, buckwheat time. <laughs> Someone that doesn't, uh, it doesn't state any wrongdoing. That's right. Any right, malfeasance right. or misfeasance. Yeah, yeah all that, all that. Mm -hmm. So let, let me be clear here. And I said this too, and, and I know you didn't hear this. Something may be morally reprehensible, but that doesn't mean it's illegal. Right. Boyce Watkins shifting that money to those other businesses may be morally irreprehensible. It may be morally repugnant. But that doesn't mean that it's illegal. Right. Now, if he deprived Miss Lloyd out of money that she deserved under a contract between the two of them, but it appears to me that they didn't have a contract. Because if you know anything about uh, this area, as you claim to know, Miss M.I., if you're aware of that, you would know that when someone files a breach of contract case, they also have to file the agreement that's been breached as an exhibit along with the complaint. Mm -hmm. And that was not filed with Miss, Mrs. Lloyd's, I think she's married now, Mrs. Lloyd's complaint. There's a court rule that required that says that if the suit is based upon a breach of contract, you have to attach the actual contract that you are alleging has been breached. Okay. Go in the federal court rule and read that one. Okay? So what contract here has been breached? It's verbal. Apparently, it's verbal. Well, they may have some sort of writing, but again, she failed to attach it. So let me not say that. She could have had it, and which I don't know why her attorney wouldn't do it. Why her? Because you're supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. So either her attorney chose to leave that out for some undisclosed reason or motivation, or he just didn't know about it, or he just forgot about it. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, anybody can file a case. Anybody can file. You can go file a lawsuit tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that it has any merit. You can go file a lawsuit and you can be correct in some of the allegations and still not get any money. Mm -hmm. You can go file a lawsuit and be absolutely correct in, in, in what you're saying is wrong and still lose. Mm -mm -mm. 
you see? So what we think, again, niggas confuse in, in the court system, morality and legality, those are two different things in a court of law. So he could have shifted that money to wherever he shifted it. He is liable for any money still owed to her under the agreement. Right. That he is liable for. But just for uh, switching the money to different per particular corporations, there's no liability in that unless he's using that to either defraud shareholders or to defraud the public. That is where he becomes liable for fraud, misrepresentation, um, conversion, and the like, and the stuff that she alleged in the complaint. If he's doing it to the point where it's injurious to other people and the public, yes. But again, I cite, and you should know this, the business judgment rule, which says that if a, an owner of a corporation or a business is taking actions designed to protect the interest of his business, then the law doesn't interfere with that. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about, Tony. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Shake my head. Yeah, you I don't know. know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. So, uh, Miss Moore, whoever you are, uh, you didn't basically say anything. You basically said that we was wrong about some shit that we were right about. We was right about, and which you actually agreed to and concurred to. I don't know what the hell. What, what, what the fuck is wrong with these people, man? They live in an alternate reality, alternate dimension. A lot of, whatever, I think man, a lot so. of people are just bored. I think that's what it is. A lot <laughs> yeah, of people are just bored and they just want something to say. And I think a lot of people, they get vested. These YouTube personalities become people that they can identify with in real mm -hmm. life. So whenever anyone says anything against them, mm -hmm. you know, they just come out and defend it because really they're not so much as defending the personality as they're defending that part of themselves that mm -hmm. that personality represents. Right. So anti-Afro Spengali is her. You see what I'm saying? She got triggered because we said something against someone that represents who she is as a person. For all we know, that could be anti-Afro Bengali be. with a you know a with proxy, a, a, a different fake ass screen account. name. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I mean, yeah. you we we said that in the video that if he was to answer correctly, he would have had her claim dismissed outright. You know, if I, mm. that that's the correct way he handled it, and that's the way he should handle it. But he's not doing it that way. He's trying to settle the shit. All right, well, check this out. We're going to move on. I got something else. Uh, we're going to uh, go to Rise of the Born Incels. Uh, I neglected to... I've been wanting to talk about this right here, this gentleman, Militant Kane. Oh, yeah. Did you read this? I've read some of it, but it was so stupid. Okay, well, let me read it, ahead. and I'll allow you to respond to it, okay? okay. Militant Kane basically wrote in Rise of the Born Incel. He said, LOL, simps indeed. You can't scream biologic imperative in the age of feminism. You talk about evolution, but leave the out, but leave out the most important factor. Men have been devalued in this new society. Jobs that men can do have been given to women, thereby making men less necessary. More men are competing for fewer higher paying jobs. Hypergamy is open and on steroids under these conditions. Now you need a 100K salary just to have a shot. A man can no longer bar barter with 40K a year job. Hypergamy can't be natural if everyone is supposed to be equal. Tricks like you are operating on old world logic. Okay, what do you got to say about that there, Tony? What First you got? of all, that's a jumble mesh of uh, nothing to me. Right. As far as bar bartering with 40K, nigga, I barter with 75. <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> I barter with 75. Uh. Insofar as, as, the, as the workplace, the, 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 the feminism or the feminization of society, that has nothing to do with my argument. Right. That, has, that is so far away from what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this. Again, th this is what happens when people overdose on information. This is what happens when people... And I love reading and I love learning. But this is what happens when these niggas overdose <laughs> on information that is not really applicable to their direct situations, to their direct lives. It's, it's, it's always good to go outside the box. But some niggas, they, they just implode mentally. 
you know, and intellectually. And that's what this is. This is an intellectual implosion. Mm -hmm. But let me clarify what I'm saying. It is natural. It is a biological imperative for men to want to screw women. Mm -hmm. It is called sexual desire. That is something that is innate in almost every man. (laughs) And I'm trying not to say all. Mm -hmm. As little boys come of age, they tend to have an attraction to girls, especially when they see them developing these things called breasts. Especially when they begin to see them getting this thing called ass. It is the natural biological imperative for a man to want to be with a woman again, unless he's a homosexual or unless he's a born incel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about it. What you're talking about, they're confusing the me too argument or the sexual harassment in the workplace argument with the argument that says that men are sexually attracted to women. Mm-hmm. I've never thought that I, in a million years that in 2019 I would have to explain basic biology <laughs> to niggas with a plethora of information and a complicated, convoluted vocabulary. I never thought I would have to do that. But I used to laugh when people would say, you're so smart that you're dumb. Mm-hmm. I used to laugh at that. And I used to, I couldn't understand what, when people would say, well, you got book knowledge but you don't have street sense. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what that means. Now I'm beginning to understand what that means. You know, people are getting so lost in in the pursuit of knowledge and information that they're in a sense emasculating themselves. You can't even say that women are doing it. It it is a, a type of devolution or degenerative process where they're losing touch with the most basic functions in society. It, well, it's a situation where the more information you learn, the more stupid you're becoming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if you ever, and I know you say that I have a declining people IQ, but if you mm-hmm. ever see me coming that way, brother, go on in there and get that rifle and end it for me very quickly, <laughs> okay? I don't want to live anymore if I become that fucking stupid. <laughs> I don't deserve to draw a breath if I become that fucking stupid to where I can't distinguish between a natural desire that men have and a political construct due to something that is being forced on men, not by women, because these policies are being acted by men. That's the other thing that's being said. Women are not in power in this society. Right. What did, Am I on some Rip Van Winkle shit where I went to sleep for 20 years and got up and, 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 and women are controlling? It is not women that are ultimately making these decisions. Nope. These decisions are made by oligarchs higher up. Mm-hmm. And they're men. Weaponized women. Weaponizing women. Mm-hmm. Shit. Well, let me just say this, man, because, you know, man, to me, there ain't no substitute man for just overall just down and dirty gutter experience, man. You know, Homeboy talking about, you know, you got to at least have 100K to get with a bitch. You can't no longer fuck with a bitch if you got 40K in your pocket. Like, nigga, I worked 10 years in a goddamn close max prison, man. Do you know how many broads in there that had degrees and went to school and got caught sucking convict dick man <laughs> getting having kids by them niggas having kids by these motherfuckers these niggas didn't have a hundred k or forty k they didn't have ten k they didn't have five k in their goddamn bank account all they needed was just the will to look a bitch in their face they get on your knees and suck my dick these niggas be killing me man they have no concept no no concept no clue about what the so-called Biologic imperative imperative is. It ain't got shit to do with your goddamn bank account, man. Trust and believe me when I tell you, man. The only way to trump the government when, when it comes to this uh, manhood shit, because, you know, the government is basically acting like a power trick. They say, look, bitch, you act right, you behave. Uh, We're going to basically uh, give you food, clothing, shelter. You know what I mean? But I better not catch you cheating on me. I better not catch you with Pookie and Ray Ray standing in your shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, really the only thing that you gotta do as a man is you need to just outman the government. 
That's all you got to do. You need to out, man, the government. And it, it, it don't really have shit to do with paying a bitch's bills or giving her what she wants, you know what I mean, financially. It's just all about your energy, man. That's really all it's about. It's about your energy. And working in that prison, if I didn't learn anything else, it's all about energy. Them niggas ain't got shit. They ain't got a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of. But, man, they was coming up fucking all the bitches that worked there. You know what I mean? So this nigga sitting here talking about, you know, what 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 society is and you, how much money you got to make it. Nigga, man, you have no concept, no clue about what the fuck you talking about. It, it has nothing to do with how much money you making, man. Don't, ain't got jack shit to do with how much money you making to basically uh, bend a woman to your will, bro. Well, he, he's talking about in order to appear, in order to appear attractive to women, you have to have the trappings of materialism. Mm, that's not but necessarily true. That's not necessarily true. Mm -mm. Um, it helps. It helps. But that's <laughs> not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. You, you can. Well, let me let me say it this way: Women are going to be attracted to men with toys. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll right. give you. I'll throw you that bone. But you can't. You can't go from a woman being attracted to you to bending her to your will by your toy. Because, see, she when she see your toy, she thinking about coming up. Mm -hmm. See, you become, a, you become a bag to her. And she's trying to figure out how she can reach in that bag and extract some of these material benefits. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to, at some point, distinguish yourself and assert your manhood or your masculinity to lay down the rules as to what you will accept. The money may be an attraction, but it's you that has to lay down the law. Mm -hmm. You have to have an understanding of how to deal with these women. Now, you brought up the prison experience. I was talking to a woman who, you know, who is uh, who works at a prison. And here's what she said. Mm -hmm. She said that people often think that we're weak minded, you know, for falling for these men. And she said some of that that may be the case sometimes. She said, but you don't understand. She said we're working on those tiers in those blocks 10 to 12 hours a day mm -hmm. she said and we're in there and those men are predatory they watch you she said those men are very observant of their behavior they're very observant of the least little things that they do she said some of those dudes are so cold with it they can smell when you on your menstrual cycle right you see what i'm mm -hmm. saying so there's a type of predatory intelligence that those men are exercising. They are using the woman's nature against her. Mm -hmm. You understand? They're using all of the informal cues, all of the informal language of seduction to get their dick sucked. And they don't have a dime. They in there begging people for commissary and care packages. <laughs> You understand? Yeah. But what they're doing is they're working on this woman's mind by using her own nature against her. And that doesn't necessarily cost a dime for them mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So these niggas going around, you know, dismissing the biological imperative. Do that at your own peril, nigga. Do that at your own peril. Yeah, you go ahead. You keep thinking to yourself that this shit does not factor into uh, getting abroad, man, or bending her to your will. You keep thinking that the government is almighty and uh, you just can't circumvent it. You can't get around it. Man, uh, yeah, so a man think of, so shall he be. So if you think that that's the case, guess what? No pussy for you, my, my son. <laughs> no pussy for you. But I'm here to tell you, there is a way. Uh -huh. It's the power trick movement. That's one of the ways. You know what I mean? What's that old adage talking about? There's many roads to Rome. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And uh, me and Tony, we have found certain ways to get around the bullshit in the fuckery. Look, let me make this plain. Uh -huh. We said this years ago. Right. And nobody paid attention. Mm -hmm. We told you there was gonna, an era was coming where prostitution was going to be a very viable option for men that don't want to enter into relationships with women. We told y'all this years ago. Mm -hmm. That time is here. For whatever the reason, men do not want to have long-term relationships with women. They don't want to enter into marriages with women because the contracts are inverted and distorted and they're usurious. Mm -hmm. there, there was going to come a time when men would just simply be resigned to pay women a certain amount of money, get their nut off and get on. Now, with niggas, it, it's, 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 kind of, it's, a, it's a kind of stagnant progression. White folks have always known this, mm -hmm. and they have always done it. The most successful of which is Charlie Sheen, okay? Bill Cosby sits in prison 
today mm -hmm. at 10.38 a.m. Charlie Sheen out here passing along, allegedly, whether you believe it or not, right. a sexually transmitted disease, an incurable one. And he's in a million dollar mansion, either in Las Vegas or in Beverly Hills, California, living with two bitches that do his bidding. R. Kelly got a stable of bitches walking around naked and pimp slapping them and <laughs> stomping on the floor if they want to summon him. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Why do you, if you want to argue it's because they have money, yes, they've been able to skirt the system by the intelligent use of their money. But this is the new dynamic when men understand that what these women are after is their money and they're, they're using their hypergamous nature against them. In each one of those documentaries, mm -hmm. you know why they hadn't, excuse me, in each one of those cases in the documentary, R. Kelly, those women came on television and exonerated R. Kelly of any rape charge. You know why? You know what they said? Oh, well, when he, you know, took off my clothes and asked me, or asked me to take my clothes off, how could I say no? He's <laughs> R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. So what they're telling you is that they consented from the gate. So if they consented uh, from the gate and they were of legal age, he can't be charged with rape. Mm -hmm. And here he is up here making them piss in pots. Letting them know when they can and can't eat. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because they're chasing his money. You said, well, that proves my point. He he has to have such and such. That, that The money is not what made them broad stay there. Right. The status alone is not what made them stay there. But that that is an imperative that you can't wrap your mind around yet. Mm -hmm. That is something that you can't understand. That is an aspect of fee male sexuality that you're you're not quite ready to comprehend yet so i'm not going to go into a discussion a long discussion about it because you're simply not ready for it there's plenty of broke niggas that got off the same shit that uh, r kelly is getting and off. still getting it off <laughs> trust me i'll tell you man there's plenty of brothers out here man that's shacking up with the bitch eating off the bitch driving the bitch car you know what i mean doing all sorts of just you know smacking the bitch around Ain't got nothing going for him, but he getting off the same shit R. Kelly is getting off, man. You listening, the, the nigga you just heard is the Section 8 version of R. Kelly. <laughs> I'm the Section 8 son. That's the Section 8 version of R. Kelly. Man. This is a food stamp R. Kelly. <laughs> These bitches are calling and asking, can they go fuck another nigga? <laughs> Shit, These bitches man. are calling and asking for permission to do the most elementary shit that they would normally do. Mm. And he don't have 40K a year? Nope. Mm. Well, let's dig digress. That, that, that was back in my heyday. That's, that was not, back, that, now. that's not now. Yeah, okay. I'm, yeah, I, I'm a reformed citizen. I'm a good person now. <laughs> You've gone clean. Uh, I'm clean. Yeah. But it doesn't... It, it, it doesn't benefit you and, and i'm, I'm going to say that it, uh, celibacy is a hell of a drug because i think that's where a lot of this shit is coming from i really think and, I, and i'm not trying to throw shade i'm not trying to i think a lot of this shit is the result of celibacy mm -hmm. it is the these are the consequences ram, uh, ramifications and repercussions of celibacy of being dry of being dry these niggas are losing touch with reality they're going <laughs> crazy and so all they got left is all of this random information that they've read from uh freud or that they've read from all of these other psychologists or all of these other paragons in the MGTOW world all of these people that have become authorities uh, of, of, of celibacy and, and of hy the hypergamous nature of women and of the dark side of female sexuality. That's all they're clinging to. And it, what they're using or the, the, the information that they're using has no real relevance in their lives because interactions with women, as you always say, mm -hmm. there's static knowledge and there's dynamic knowledge. Right. When you're dealing with women, it's a dynamic situation. The factors and circumstances change on a dime. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're basically dancing on razor blades. Shit, shit just transforms in a second in the blinking of an eye. So that information may not necessarily apply in this particular instance or in this particular circumstance. But these niggas is holding this information, these niggas are holding this information out it's absolute in every instance. And so what you are becoming 
you're becoming ideological flunkies. Mm. You're becoming ideological flunkies. And you wind up in a situation where you're disputing established fact, shit that's concrete, shit that you just can't argue. Mm. Motherfuckers kill me with this shit, man. What does biological imperative got to do with anything? Just <laughs> like, what, nigga? <laughs> Like, <laughs> man, boy, you can tell a nigga that's just fucking defeated, man. Yeah. You know, just broken. Just broken. It's like, what do you mean? What does that got to do with anything, man? We Here at Mag City, we always tell the players, man, you use a bitch nature against her, man. You know what I mean? But these are the same very, these are the very same niggas that, you know, they don't believe that a woman has a nature, obviously. You know what I mean? Or at least a nature that they uh, can exploit. Yes. I'm like, bro, man. Like, it's like taking candy from a baby, man. Me being out here in these streets for so long, you know. I, I was tasked with the, uh, the the job of approaching women that I didn't even know on the streets to get them to do porn. I didn't go to no model agency. Dick. <laughs> I had to look at a female, assess her, size her up, and be like, I bet I can. I, I bet it's, I bet I can get her to put in work. You know how did I do that? biological imperative man i used their nature against it you know what i mean now not going into the specifics of all that you know what i mean uh if you want to know some of that stuff you need to join my patreon or maxcity.com cheap plug <laughs> cheap plug i got it all written down you know what i mean in these uh in the website man i'm just i just get man disheartened man by these cats who have just given up my nigga you know what i mean they just done gave the fuck up, man. They've become broken. This society, and that's really some sad mm. shit. Mm. They've become broken. This society has broken them. And you can't really be but so angry with them mm -hmm. because in, in some instances, I pity them and I and I empathize and I sympathize with them. But I just can't do that, boss. I, I, I can't go that way. I can't. I'm not wired like that. I'm not wired to, to, to just give up. I'm not wired to just, you know, stick my head in the sand or go you know if i go into seclusion it's self-imposed seclusion to get myself right because at the end of the day i still have to function i still have to exist in this world even if i don't believe in some aspects of it even if i don't like some aspects of it i still have to deal with reality as it's presented to me and let me say something else because this is the undertone this is what they this is the ugly undertone in these conversations conversations and this is what is triggering triggering a lot of these niggas they believe that we're saying that those men are better than them okay they they believe that what we're doing is we are elevating the thugs the pookies the ray rays you know the dre drays the scoobies they think that we are elevating them over the so-called lame square educated dude or the more successful conservative black male that's what they think we're doing. They think that we're validating the ascendancy of the stupid over the intelligent. And if you think that you would have to be stupid and unintelligent because we've done the exact opposite. Because just like we use these bitches' natures against them, we use Pookie and Ray Ray's natures against them. That's how we're able to get off everything we want. We're playing everybody off against each other. Mm -hmm. And it works masterfully. You understand? Mm. We know that nigga gonna fuck up that bitch's life. We know that. See, when that nigga fucks up that bitch's life, she can't demand 40K from you. When that nigga fucks up that bitch's life, she can't demand 1K from you. When that nigga fucks up that bitch's life, she's lucky to get $75. You understand? Mm. And that's a biological imper imperative. That's a biological imperative. It's called self-preservation. Mm -hmm. It's called self-preservation. When I don't have anywhere else to go, and this nigga done fucked my life up, and my power bill is due, let me go on over here and juggle these balls <laughs> for $75. You are crass, sir. You understand? You are crass. That, that, I, I, it is what it is. <laughs> After these niggas done ran through their money, after these niggas done, you know, made them blow their rent or, or, or they were stupid enough to give these niggas their rent money for them to go in the street and flip it. Or they done took their money and diddy bopped to another bitch and tricked it off with her and left that girl and her, and, and her child, left that bitch and her child on the verge of eviction, on the verge of having no lights, 
on the verge of having no water, on the verge of having no gas, on the verge of having no heat, guess where she has to come? Guess where she has to go in order to survive? Guess where she has to go in order to eat? But wait a minute, man. He says tricks like you are operating on an old world logic. <laughs> so what you talking about don't mean nothing, man. You don't know what the fuck you talking about, Tony. And niggas like you are operating <laughs> on air. See, you come on here. You come on come old in these comment sections with a whole lot of convoluted ideas and, and extensive vocabulary. But you don't understand real life as it's happening right in front of you. Niggas like you are delusional. Okay? Niggas like you want to be new age. You want to be new age. With a, Your philosophy is antiquated. Your philosophy, because all these ideas that you are discussing have already happened. There's nothing new. These things have already taken place in various uh, forms in other societies. So, I mean, if, if you want to walk around thinking you on some space age shit, I mean, God bless you, man, but you know, good night, because you might as well, you know, it, it's over for you. It's over for you. If you ignore the blade at your throat for the gun that's three miles away, you're a dead motherfucker. You said tricks like you were operating on old world logic. I'm like, nigga, it's, uh, it's the oldest game in town, the nigga. oldest game. And it ain't never going to stop. Never. Prostitution, pimping, and tricking will never the stop. basis of civilization, man. <laughs> it is the lifeblood of commerce and economics. Man. People are always exchanging something they need for something that someone else needs or wants. It, it, it's the lifeblood of society. It's no different than when you go to a job and you give, you sell your labor. You're selling your labor for wages. You're selling your labor for money. It's, it's the lifeblood of human existence. Mm. It's the funny thing, man. You know, these niggas, you know, they operating on an either or paradigm and it ain't that, man. It's, uh, it's yes, that. both of these situations are true. Yes, they you are. You know what I mean? Yeah, you do have a situation in, in America where the woman has been weaponized, but at the same time, you cannot ignore the biological imperative that uh, you can use to influence a woman, man. So, you know, motherfuckers coming in here trying to, you know, talk about how you know 100k 40k hypergamy and you know i'm like nigga you know hypergamy is a biological imperative is it not <laughs> yes it is yes it is you know what i mean so in in his very statement where he was trying to disprove what the hell we were saying he basically uh buckwheat validated yeah validate our uh uh our assessment our assessment about biological appearance <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. Like, come on, man. Yeah, I mean, it ain't either or. It's it's all rolled and up butt. into a gumbo, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? The biological imperative, as well as the social engineering aspect of trying to subjugate men. You know what I mean? Like, come on, wake the fuck up, man. It sounds like what they're doing is they're saying the same thing, but they're going in a roundabout way to say it. Because they just want to be oppositional. Yeah, just want to be oppositional. <laughs> they just want to argue just for the sake of arguing. Mm -hmm. They don't have a real uh, argument to pose. You know? <coughs> Again, I think it's really because we're attacking people that they... Oh, we're not attacking. We're not even attacking these people. We're criticizing them. Mm -hmm. We're criticizing or we're, we're critiquing people that reflect them at a very, very... An intimate level of their lives. These people represent them. Mm -hmm. So to attack these people is like attacking them. Right. They got to come up with something to attack us with. Yeah, yeah. When the very shit that they're attacking us with is shit we're saying. Shit, shit we're saying and we're in agreement with. <laughs> shit, man. These niggas, man. I'm trying to tell you what. If I read one more statement, man, where a motherfucker coming at us you know, wagging their fingers about how wrong we are. I'm like, nigga, you just said what we said. We're in agreement. So, well, I, man, we go through this all the time, man, where we are in virtual lockstep agreement with some silly ass nigga in the comment section. And, you know, he, he, he has no clue that we're in agreement. I'm like, nigga, did you listen to the video? I'm like, yeah, we talked about that and we agree with that assessment. But in the comment section, you're saying that we're opposed to it, that we're adversarial to it. I'm like, nigga, 
Oh, Tony, man. Well, again, you know, they get, you know, triggered or what have you. But, again, I, 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 at the end of the day, it goes back to what, what did Jeff Webb say? Jeff Webb mm-hmm. said, your people are not warriors, man. Right. Mm-hmm. If there's a war, you're going to lose. Mm-hmm. And this is exactly, yes. this is exactly why. Mm-hmm. You see, this is exactly why, you know, it's just, you're defeated, you're broken. Mm-hmm. They've broken you. And you th- here's the sick part. You think that you're rebelling against them. They, they, you actually believe, or they have you believing, that you are in a state of rebellion against them. Actually, you're doing just what they expected you to do. That's what happens. You know, that's why organizations like the FBI and the Central Intelligence Agency and the National Security Agency, the craft of intelligence is, or counterintelligence as it would be, it's so effective because what they do is they use the nature of their enemy against them. Mm-hmm. They use human psychology, natural reactions, natural responses. They do things to elicit these responses and then they use these responses against you to accomplish a certain outcome that they wanted from the start. But you think that you're doing something in rebellion, but your rebellion serves the bigger picture. Your rebellion plays into their master plan. So this idea of thinking, you know, that or confusing uh, uh, political uh, weaponization of women with basic biology, uh, yeah, that's what they want. You know, mm-hmm. they want you stupid. You know, they want you dumbed down. They want you out of touch with reality. They want you to think, you know, that you 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 are on some space age form of enlightenment. That's what they want you. They want you on Mars and Pluto. They want you in other galaxies because they're going to steal whatever they're going to steal right from under your feet, right from under your nose. So Militant Kane or whatever your name is, uh, I, I, I just, I don't know what to say to you anymore. Bottom line, man, you don't need no 40K to barter with no bitch, man. No. And, and this is coming from tricks. Tricks. All right? So... You don't need an, an, an inordinate amount of money to get with a broad, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, niggas is just, you know, they rely too much on their wallet in this aspect, man. I'm like, come on, man. I don't I don't even think that this, this is him relying on his wallet. I just think it's a dude that just has entirely too much information that he can't use mm-hmm. or doesn't know what to do with. And so now, he again, he is mentally, he's intellectually imploding when he's confronted with the world around him. He's losing touch with reality. So you're right, it's not your money because if it was a money game, I would have been out of this a long time ago. Mm-hmm. You understand? I, I would have been, I would have self-destructed a long time ago because we. that's why we deal with women that we deal with, the, the, the hood bitches. Mm-hmm. The hood bitches. You know, they may sack chase, but they know what their worth is at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, you know how much action I done got with some of McDonald's cheeseburgers and a bucket of KFC chicken? Oh, God. You know how much action I have gotten? <laughs> Shit. Honey, honey. <laughs> no 40K job to get at no bitch. Like, bitch, I got some goddamn McNuggets over here. You better come goddamn act right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and if you don't know, go to MaxCity.com or to the Patreon, Max City to the Patreon, cheap plug. Yeah, you, you need to go there and really look at it. Since you don't understand what biological imperative truly means, you need to go there and, 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 and you know, and find out. You need to go there and educate yourself. You need to go there and become enlightened because that site deals with bare bones. That's the bare bones. That's the fundamentals of biological imperative because that site is all about self-preservation. If you want to look at it, you know, that that perspective can be argued because, again, people will always do that, which will enable them to survive. So, I mean, it's, it's obvious that, you know, uh, you're, you're a little bit out of touch with reality. You're a little bit out of touch with... No, you're not a little bit out. You're, you're, you're way out of touch with reality. And again, there, there's... I don't have anything to say next It's not time. either or, it's both. It's okay. both. So, once again, yo, join my Patreon. I got tons of shit in there. Something in there for everybody, man. You know, hit me up on the PayPal if you so choose. You know what I mean? And, of course, we have the real-life docudrama. You know what I mean? Reality show, MaxCity.com. Basically showcasing my adventures in these streets, man, for, you know, 
12, 13 years, man. If you want to know how I did it, how I got down, how I uh, got over and used a female's nature against her, it's all in that website, maxity.com. So uh, go ahead, Tony. Do your thing, man, to let it, let it catch know where they can find you at and send us out of here. Powerandstrategy.com. Uh, that's where, that's my blog. Uh, on the Negro Manosphere, I drop every Tuesday. I have an article coming out this Tuesday on R. Kelly and the future of black male sexuality. Uh, again, that's the Negro Manosphere on Tuesday. Uh, Patreon, Power of Strategies on Patreon. On PayPal, Way of Strategies 44. Uh, on my articles, please like and share my articles. Subscribe to the website. And if you see fit, there's a comment section on the right-hand side of my blog. If you just have to, if you just want to respond and you just want to have something to say, don't even take that shit to YouTube anymore. Bring it to Power Strategy because at least I get some traffic on my little struggling <laughs> website. Mm -hmm. So if you have the need to pontificate about bullshit, I mean, just put it on Power. Don't, don't grace Max City with that bullshit. If you want to just, you want to air air out, you know, your 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 thought process, or you just need to talk, or you just need someone that will listen, put that <coughs> shit to good use. Uh, use my comment section on the right-hand side of my blog on the front page if you want to give criticisms, if you have feedback. You can even go to the Negro Manosphere. Now, I'm not a guaranteeing you that I will respond to that shit, especially if it's irrelevant, especially if it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but it'll give you a chance to, you know, it, it's a form, it's a, it's, it's cathartic. I'm, I'm offering you, uh, I'm offering you a form of therapy, if you will. Uh, put that shit on the Negro Manosphere or put that shit on Power and Strategy, but don't put that shit here, you know, because, or, or maybe, oh, well, what do you say? It does give us material, right? It does give us something to talk about, but it's... Oh, yeah, it definitely does that. You know, it gives us something to talk about, but it's... Plenty I mean, retarded shit to respond to. Yeah, <laughs> it, it only validates, you know, the argument of low IQ in the black community, especially when you're arguing something we've already agreed to, okay? Mm -hmm. So with that being said, you know, again, powerstrategy.com, way of strategy 44 on PayPal, uh... Power of strategies on Patreon, and you know that I'm I'm just done. I'm just thoroughly annoyed at this point. All right, all right, all right. Yep, 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 yep.